Hello everyone and welcome back. We are at this guy, the worm, like I said we'd be. I need to stop being impressed that I start videos where I said I'd start them, but it takes some work. There's so much in this game that I get very, very distracted very, very quickly. I mean, I've got to just climb this, right? It's just simple as that. Climb up his little leggies. My mask is going crazy, so I know there's other worms here. Does this be daddy chum? Unlikely, but it would be cute. We have the chum queen, now we need the chum king. Now if someone doesn't draw fan art of that, I will. It's very quiet. Oh, there's a cartographer's. Oh, and there's a ring. Oh, and there's a thing. Oh, no. Okay. Is it a city? Help. Oh, there's too many things. I need to mark them all. Okay. Um. What are the towers? Oh, there's so much. Okay. Uh, worm. Focus on the worm. Is there a worm up on top of the worm? The answer is no. And there's another town. Oh, there's so much here. There is a worm up there. Okay. Oh, and there's a statue over there of the... Didn't we call it the machinist before? I don't know if that's actually what it is, but... That's what we're gonna call it. That one. The biker. I see you, Wormy. I just... I want to go all the places. Okay, we made it up here. Is there anything inside of it? Um, book? I pick up the worn and weathered pages left in the small encampment. Not something I'd expect to find up here and far too tempting to ignore. The diary. Here I am. You told me to look to- oh no. Pirasta? You told me to look to Pirasta when I had lost it all. And here I am with nothing and no one, alone at the end of all my failures. I will sit and think for a while. Perhaps something will come to me. Otherwise, I look to fall. Are you going to jump? I know you won't want to hear me, but I have to tell you. Parasta spoke to me. In a voice like rolling thunder and late evening shivers. She shook my bones and told me there is more to this than I know, and that I must look inside the statue. I have no way inside, but I will find one. Where I am bidden to go by Parasta's whim... There will I walk in her great shadow. Um... Hi, Worm. I didn't even see you. I'm sorry. So, do we wait until it's dark to walk in her great shadow? Are you Pirasta? Are you a she? You're not just, like, giant worm? What's this? Is it in it? I can, but it doesn't do me any good. Oh, Sit and think for a while. Do I need to literally just sit here? I'll sit here and think for a while. Is that what you want me to do? It doesn't seem like sitting and thinking is the answer. What are these guys? Can I pick you up? Wrong. What? <laughs> found your brains. Do I make a stew with your brains? Oh my god, I can't hit the right buttons today. This one. Put down. Oh, no likey. Nope. Don't like that. Here, have another one. Ugh. No. No innards. I don't like innards. More written notes. It seems they managed to get inside too. I don't like it. I'm inside. I got inside. I see now this gaping darkness by Pirasta. I'm never going to get the name right. Pirasta beckoned me. There's a secret here she wished me to know. And it's so much more than I ever imagined. This place. This creature. She's alive! I think I can press on and go further in. I don't know if I can return the way I came, but so few stories are told of those who walk back along their own footsteps. 
I will find a way through to the other side. I don't think you should. I have been camped here for two days now, Anna. It is warm here and the air is old and damp, but there is nice salt in it too. Ew. My skin feels better inside this place than on the unforgiving dunes. Ew. In my explorations, I have dropped some unimportant things down into Perusta. Rocks, small and large. A beetle. I wonder, should I descend further and go below myself? The voice of Purasta calls to me, but she is drowned out by other noises of rushing water and a deep, resonant gurgling. It all sings, and more and more I yearn. There are lines of scribbles over whatever was written next, then it resumes. What have I got to lose? I'll leap into the darkness. If I don't return, then know this. I love you, Anna. I don't like the sphincter of the worm. Okay, come here, little brain bobbles. Go in the acid pit. I don't like ye. Water? Yes. Ugh. I don't like your undulating. At least you're cool as implanting things inside you. Doesn't hurt? Doesn't get you angry? She's gone insane, hasn't she? He, they. Uh, oh. Just gonna take this. I don't like. <laughs> Give me another brain bobble, thank you. Into the pit. No. Ugh. Got some pustules over here, buddy. Might need to get those checked out. I keep hitting Y to pick up an X to whistle, and it's not right. It's the opposite. Away, brain! But hey, that little slip up is how we found this place in the first place. If we get to the worm's heart, I'm gonna flip. Oh, This piece is damp and mold creeps at its edges. Anna! I have fallen so far down, slipping and sliding and plunging for an eternity. What things I saw in the blur of the walls as they sped past me. What secrets I heard in the whispers of the rushing wind. Anna, 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 if you could only know, if you could only see. But Parasta's voice is not for all to hear. Oh, you've gone mental. At the end of my fall, I found myself in a new world, and I have lived here in this place for half a day now. Oh, centuries. <laughs> I see now why they called to me. She's a god, but she's crying for help. You've been here for like a day, and you're losing your mind. I've been here for less than a day and I'm losing my mind. Okay, give me some more brain baubles. <gasps> Is that a worm that I saw in there? Doubt it. I was hoping. Put it down. Thank you. I want the thing behind this first. 20 cuts. It's always 20 cuts. I found another excerpt from the diary. Anna, I live, but it's a sorry life. I've lost her voice down here, and now it's only dampness and rot in the silence. A single drip at the end of a tunnel it hits like it stops abruptly halfway through a sentence, and when it resumes, the script appears hastier than it ever has. Anna, you'll not believe it! Oh, my love, my cherished one! That was the secret! It is when I'm lost that she finds me. Anna, for what is Parasta? But a helper of those in need. Oh, what a fool I am. How stupid. I quite nearly gave up, but I've just heard her again. I know what she wants. She's so, so hungry. For you. How many of these do you need? I don't like the machines holding open the stomach to dump boxes of goodies into it. No likey! Uh-uh. I was stopping to sightsee. You do not do that. I'm feeding you. You can be polite. Ugh. Can I climb up one of your nasty little holes here? Ugh. <laughs> There's just gonna be a lot of ugh-ing, I guess, in this video. 
I mean, I guess you're the skeletons. You're kind. Ugh. I should have brought another one. Is that what you're hinting at here? Oh, I almost made it to the light. Stop singing to me. I know it's a lie. Sable parkour! What happened to our light? Did I break it? Um... The shrine, if it can be called that, sends chills down my spine. I feel in the presence of something, but whatever it is, it's no god. There's something carved into a piece of wood, and it reads like an incantation. Oh no. I submerge myself, Pirasta, into the depths of you. Of my body, build yourself that you might live anew. Above the incantation sits a mask, repulsive and scarred. It looks to be made from a baby sandworm. Are the teeth of its mouth real? In the darkness, I listen, trying to hear whatever the writer believed was Pirasta's voice. There's nothing. Oh, we heard it earlier. Um, give me the mask. I reach forward and take the mask. I should look for a way out. So what if I return to my people wearing... <laughs> Hi guys, I'm back from my gliding. What's up? How'd it go? Okay, it reminds me of two things. It makes me think of the Wiggler's Mask from uh, Monster Hunter. And it makes me think of Light Lakes from Zelda. If the two were combined, it's what this would be. That can't smell good in there. I like my other worm mask, please. Um, here you go. No, oh, Sable, your aim. Oh, that should it. Oh! Ew! 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 Oh, there's a worm in here. My mask is, uh, dancing. Wormy, you let yourself get eaten? I mean, you'd think I would have seen it if I was passing it. This place doesn't have any paths other than up. So maybe it's up here. Doesn't seem like it. Wormy? Ugh. Okay, wormy. There you are. Oh, is this that oasis I was looking at before? I bet you it is. It was! Okay, so this was the oasis. We just climbed out that worm's butt. For a mask. Well, that was an adventure. And our friend, um, gave themselves up to it. Let themselves get digested. Let's go to the cool observatory. Hello? Hello, giant machinist. This is what I'm gonna keep calling you. Hello, Ori. That's really cool! So how do I turn it on? Do I whistle at it? Nope. Worked at the last place. <gasps> I see the mask lady person. We have a sun. We have a beetle. We have a snaky snake. Oh. Victory man. Uh, angry moose. Something that should be censored for this video. Okay. Oh. The ri oh! We're opening up the windows. The sunstone manifests when the machinery is in place. When the sun casts shadows, provide the stone the answer it seeks. Oh, so we had to play this game, the waiting game. Is that what you're saying here? I need to go fetch? Let's learn some of these mechanics, shall we? Rotate it back. 
Okay, I'm guessing we want it blue. Blue's good, right? We need to find where it's all three lit up. Okay, you like that one. Is it timed? Do I need to have this like before the sun sets or something? I do this for each of them. Oh, because you're the outer one. Yeah, you're blue. I mean, just one to the left seems to be the answer for all these so far. Until now. All my plans are lined up. Now I have to put it into the one that's lit up? Is that what it's saying? Is it that straightforward? Alright, celebratory guy. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. In front of me, some kind of projection appears as if by magic. In its floating geometry, I see the lights that blaze in the night sky. I see where we came from. I mean, we already know the Saren situation. As I focus on each element of this complex visualization, I realize that there's something being imparted to me. That I'm reading and understanding things. I decide to focus toward... Uh... Oh, there's so many choices. I do all of them? Unknown geometry. I look upon the shape as I struggle to describe. It is pure and strange geometry, so bizarre and yet so orderly, it cannot be organic. I know immediately that this is the maw. This is the impossible thing that birthed the whale. I know from stories, from history, and from the knowledge that seeps into my brain here that this was made by living things, sentient ones with plans and intentions. But even though I know it, I cannot fathom it. Its scale is incomprehensible, and the magnitude of it is such that, even in replica, I cannot look at it for long. Something in me loathes it, and I don't know why. It's the sun! Let's just go down the list. A large glowing orb in the center is our sun, so blindingly bright that I cannot look directly at it without feeling the heat radiate within my skull. We just can't look at things right now. Around it, celestial bodies move in a rhythmic dance. On the closest planet, Emus? Emus? And her two moons flit about the sun like moths dancing over flame, the goat-headed god patron of the Abexi. Her wisdom and resolve made for some of my very favorite stories growing up. She always seemed more accessible than other gods. They also said that through certain masks, one could see her shadow on the sun. Second planet. Second planet is Midden, our sandy little home of an unremarkable rock. Made warm and vibrant by the power and energy of the Perpetual. Looking at it this way, I see another side of the Perpetual. I cannot help but notice that we look ensnared and imprisoned by it, held in by its grasp. A cold wind passes but warms as I remind myself, no, we are not being possessed, we are being protected. I offer myself that comfort. Ringed planet. Carib! And his wings! When I picture it, the ringed planet is populated entirely by beetles, living in a decidedly advanced society. It would be the perfect place for Saima, I think, but I don't love the thought of it myself. It looks larger than the other planets, and that would be a lot of beetles. Time to move on. Twinned planets. The twin fish, coral and cobalt. There seems to be small moons caught in their currents. The way they move is mesmeric, and it's hard to look away. It is said that these two are the most mischievous of the gods, and I recall the legends of them disguising themselves as children to lure kind nomads into the undercurrent of the dunes. That's cute. Machinist pants. That's not a mask. I'll take it. I enjoy the sable lore. Well, that's where we're going to stop for now. We did quite a lot. And I think we're going to tackle that town in the next one. So, thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you soon. Bye! Anna, I live, but I... Ooh. As I focus on each element of this complex visualization, around its celestial bodies, smooth and a smooth. <laughs>